All right, guys, we are breaking down or continuing to break down the meat and uh, bones and stuff and debone Crown and Coke here. And before I go any further, we got to thinking, well, it could be another good lesson in shot placement and uh, whitetail anatomy. So we're gonna go over some things here that hopefully will help you. I know after all of this, after the 24 hours of between the shot to finding him, learned a lot, learned a lot. One of my friends, wildlife artist Ryan Kirby, just did, just released a print on whitetail anatomy. You've probably seen some of his art and didn't even know it. He's designed um, some art for Winchester. If you've bought shotgun shells, a lot of his art is featured on their boxes. He's had paintings featured um, as the cover for Outdoor Life here over the last couple of years. So the dude is super talented, no doubt about it. Want to give him a shout out. And of course, I'm wearing a Ryan Kirby hat right here, but he just did a print on Whitetail Anatomy. And in that, he breaks down, you can see all the, the ribs, the musculature, the bone structure, and the obviously the goodie box of a whitetail. And so it's really interesting. We're going to refer to that, put that up in this video several different times as I'm talking. And um, it helped me a ton Here's what we've come when up. we were trying to figure out exactly where I hit top. Crown and Coke and, and what may or arrow. may not have happened, what I could have got into, because we did have a ton of trouble tracking him. Um, brought in Dixie Dog and she didn't pick up anything. Young Dog again. And um, I didn't get enough of it. We had to go back and just got lucky and found a couple pin size drops that led us to exactly where he went. So anyways, let's get started here. Now, before I do get started, I'm going to grab an arrow real quick. So this is the broadhead that I was shooting. It is a slick trick assailant. It's a hybrid head. Um, this is the first year for it. First year I've tried it on. Got two bleeder blades. I can't remember the dimensions. They're either seven eighths or three quarters of a bleeder blade. And then you have two expandable blades that once the rubber brand breaks, they obviously open up and they give you, it gives you a total cutting diameter of two and five eighths inches. So that's what I was using. Now let's look at the deer here real quick. Put that up there. So if you can imagine now, obviously he's hanging up and he's not standing there, but if you can imagine when he was standing there, his shoulder was approximately right here. Now I know obviously at this point and right after the shot that I probably wanted to be back four to six inches. He was quartering extremely hard, but be back four to six inches and probably another inch or two up would have been ideal. Cause then I would have caught front side lung, back side lung, and most likely caught the heart as well. Being this far forward, I was right above the humerus. And then if we look at Ryan's drawing, you can see the humerus or the elbow right here. And going up from that at approximately a 45 degree angle to the actual scapula is, is the other bone, is a femur. It connects to the scapula. And I got lucky that I missed the elbow, missed the humerus, missed the femur, as far as we can tell, and entered the chest cavity. And that's kind of also another thing of luck. That was such a severe angle that we were concerned that the arrow and the broadhead could have slipped between the shoulder and the chest cavity. Fortunately for me, it did not. It just breached that chest cavity. And up here, if you look at Ryan's drawing, the lungs actually fill the entire chest cavity. They go from right about through here where the diaphragm lies and fill the entire chest cavity all the way to the front. But I missed the heart. I shot in front of the heart, which we were pretty con pretty convinced of. Um, but you also have arteries that come out of that heart and go to the front and then come back up underneath the deer, up along the brisket and also go to the legs, front legs and that sort of thing. So that's kind of what happened. Um, through did not hit any bone in the front shoulder. I talked to several dog people and from the video, it does look I, I may have hit the front shoulder bones, um, but we knew that I got nine or so inches of penetration from the broken shaft that we that we did find. So arrow goes through a lot of meat there. 
enters the rib cage and that rib cage comes all the way down to right about here. So you still got a little bit of front lung. Again, severe angle. It would have been approximately like this. I mean, you can still see part of the shaft there. It would have been like this, enters the rib cage, hits that front, front side lung just barely and most likely caught a couple of the arteries. When I did open him up yesterday to remove the entrails, um, there was a ton of blood. There, we've already removed some of it between the shoulder and the uh, carcass, but there was a ton of trauma, a ton of blood. The reason we didn't have a lot of blood, which is another thing that we were contemplating, or is this possibly what happened, is when he's running, he's got all this muscle here, the hide, scapula, femur, and the humerus covering that hole. Now, that broadhead did put a pretty big hole in him. Um, I've got, I believe this is probably a bleeder blade mark right here on the rib. Cut vertically, I think with the um, expandable portion of the blade. And right here is another portion of the other uh, bleeder blade at that angle. So, once we kind of figured out that I didn't catch any bone, at least on the sh front shoulder. It then became a question of, well, did I slide between the shoulder and the carcass or did I get in that chest cavity? And I kept going back in the video and I went frame by frame by frame. And to me, you know, we have the luxury of the video evidence. It helps a ton. And if you look in the video, when the arrow strikes the deer, he drops that offside shoulder. The fletching goes up pretty violently. When he wheels to turn and make his spin, that back shoulder comes back and the fletching goes forward just as violently as it went up. That kind of told me, or at least I was hoping it was telling me, that I got into that offside shoulder and when he was making that movement, that arrow was moving with the shoulder as opposed to if it was in the brisket, he was still kind of facing to the right when the arrow impacted and when he started his turn and the brisket would not have moved quite as violently. So he should have, the arrow almost wouldn't have moved as much, I guess is what I'm getting at. So taking that all into consideration, you know, we were still gonna do our due diligence, even though Dixie didn't find a whole lot of evidence to get some closure and see if he was indeed dead and we just happened to get lucky and find a blood spot but again because of all that meat and the shoulder and the hide covering as that that entrance hole as he runs all that blood was able to fill him up inside and fill him up between the shoulder blade and the chest cavity and he just didn't bleed out per se uh, so didn't get a pass through obviously again so if you look down in here, go ahead and film down in there. If you look down in here, you can see how little of the inside of the chest cavity that I got. Um, and again, those lungs ride all the way up to the front of the chest cavity. So I barely clipped most likely just the front side lung. And uh, again, those art, the heart would have sat right about here and those arteries come up and go like this and then come back to the bottom of the, uh, the rib cage. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the uh, broad head out, I guess now. So that is the finished broadhead and uh, bent the end of that one, that blade pretty good. I would assume that's from a bone, maybe, maybe that is, maybe the bleeder blades went like this. I don't, it's hard saying at this point, but um, I would say we did get full expansion on the expandable part of the blade and uh, it hit that offside shoulder it's low enough that it probably didn't hit the scapula, probably either hit that humerus area or um, what I'm calling the femur. I'm not, again, I'm not a doctor, but that's what I'm calling it. 
and that stopped the arrow. So pretty interesting, pretty interesting. Um, and I hope that you guys learned as much as I did in this quick anatomy lesson and from uh, Ryan's artwork and that it can help you in the future on a shot similar or different from this. But thankful that we didn't give up and we kept going and looking for what we thought might be a dead deer. Um, he was dead within two minutes. I thought we felt, I mean, we felt like we looked close enough um, for blood that first day and then brought in the dog and, she, you know, again, she's a young dog, nine months old. He's only ever tracked heavy blood and uh, she didn't pick anything up, but fortunately we went back and were able to recover the deer and not lose any meat, so.